It is 6 o'clock. Thanks for being here. I'm Meredith Eli. Thanks for making us your choice for news. I'm Eric Weisfeld. And if you didn't get a chance to enjoy today's gorgeous weather, you'll have another chance. Yeah, well, it looks, it is nice outside. We do have a little bit of a haze hanging out here. Jamie says that's all that pollen in the air. Yeah, he's going to take a closer look at his certified most accurate forecast. Good evening. Good evening. And yeah, all. The grieving husband of the woman killed in a road rage incident on I-95 is sharing their story with WMBF News. Julie Eberly's husband, Ryan, spoke with our Patrick Lloyd. He joins us live in the studio now with the message Ryan wants you to hear. Patrick? And less than an hour ago, the Robinson County Sheriff posted a new picture of the suspect's car. So take a good look at this picture on your screen now. The sheriff says it's a silver four-door Chevrolet Malibu, tinted windows, chrome trim around the window frame. He says the model years between 2008 and 2013 with a North Carolina license plate. Authorities say the suspects an African American man with dreadlocks. The sheriff asks anyone who lives on or has a business near Elm Street and Roberts Avenue to take a look at their surveillance system to see if they have a picture of the car involved. We have new details. Conway Medical Center is one step closer to building a new multi-million dollar facility in Carolina Forest. This comes after DHEC approved the transfer of 50 beds into the soon to be built facility. WMBF News reporter Jennifer Roberts talked with the president of Conway Medical Center and Jennifer, he tells you that they've been waiting almost a year for DHEC to approve this bed transfer. And Jennifer, three other hospital systems plan to open facilities in the Carolina Forest area as well. The Horry County Planning and Zoning Commission recommended to rezone the corner of Carolina Forest Boulevard and Revolutionary War Way for a 3,400 3, square foot Tidelands Health Facility. That proposal now heads to Horry County Council next week. Grand Strain Health's new facility on Oak Heart Road is under construction. They broke ground in November and it's expected to be complete this summer. McLeod Health filed for a certificate of need for a new hospital on its Carolina Forest campus last August. It would add nearly 50 beds. The decision from the state there is still pending. Through our Sea Captain Sky Cam earlier tonight, this was just about an hour ago. Look at how dark it is there, that lightning you can see. Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold shared this video on his Twitter this evening from De Niro McKnight. He caught some lightning on camera as well. If you have pictures of today's storm or other pictures you want to share with us, you can send them right through your First Alert weather app. Look for the Submit a Photo button at the bottom of the page. Happy Friday at 6 o'clock. I'm Eric Heline. Thanks for making us your choice for news. I'm Eric Weisfeld. And right now, boys, some sunny beach weather out there still. It's been a gorgeous day, but you're not going to want to be on the sand this time tomorrow. Uh, no way. We've been giving you that first alert to strong storms. We're going to be seeing tomorrow both here on the air and also through your WMBF news and first alert weather wraps. Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold is breaking down the biggest risks that you need to know. About. He joins us now with a certified most accurate forecast, Jamie. And yeah, rain and storms definitely going to be on the increase as we work our way through the day on Saturday. A decision has been made for the future of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Just an hour ago, a CDC advisory committee voted in favor of restarting the use of the vaccine for anyone 18 years of age and older. WMBF's Madison Martin is live in studio with the details on the impact this continues to have on our area's vaccination efforts. Experts analyzed the data during this past week on the risks and benefits of resuming use of the J&J &J vaccine. Those results showed the number of blood clot cases would pale in comparison to the number of deaths and hospitalizations that would be prevented. Meanwhile, for one reverend and state representative in the PD and Grand Strand, the need for this shot, he says, is clear. Meanwhile, South Carolina health leaders are taking a renewed look at which groups are the most hesitant to getting the vaccine and what can be done to address their concerns. Reporter Catherine Phillips is joining us live after learning more from DHEC on their plans. Madison, yeah, right now in South Carolina, everyone older than 16 can sign up or go to a walk-in clinic and get the COVID-19 vaccine, but not everyone is. So DHEC now wants to add some analysis into this and see why that is the case. Now, DHEC says it's not just one group of people who are sitting out on getting vaccinated right now. And because they know this, they say they want to dig into their data and figure out what groups aren't rolling up their sleeves and why. Once they figure out who these people are and where in South Carolina they live, DHEC says they're better, they're better be able to market the vaccine to them.
p.m. Right now, older adults have gotten the most vaccines, and the 16 to 24 age group is the least vaccinated. At 11, getting you ready for tomorrow's severe weather. We've been giving you the first alert all week on air and through your WMBF News and First Alert weather app. Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold breaking down the biggest risks you need to know about. Plus, families still waiting for money to help feed their kids, what state leaders are doing to help, and how some South Carolina parents are letting school leaders know they don't want their kids to be forced to mask up. Six o'clock is the time. Good evening to you. I'm Eric Weisfeld. I'm Meredith Heline. Thanks for joining us. First night, let's talk about this beautiful weather that we've been having. Not summer yet, but it feels like it. Yeah, dozens of people enjoy the sunshine along our beaches this evening. And if it's not warm enough for you yet, it's going to even go higher. Good news there. We just need a little rain. Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold joins us now with a look how warm it's going to get. Maybe some rain chances and a certified most accurate forecast. Yeah, certainly no rain out there this evening, although the wind blowing pretty good. Strong sea breeze blowing its way on shore at the beaches. White caps and flapping flags here with temperatures into the 70s for a warm and windy evening. For the first time, people in Conway are getting a glimpse of what Sandridge Park could look like once construction on the Conway Perimeter Road begins. It's part of the DOT's bigger plan to connect highways 378 and 401 with a median. WMBF's Jennifer Roberts is joining us at Conway's Senior Center, where county leaders are showing the community designs of the possible park changes. Jennifer. And this is actually the second meeting today, Meredith, because there's a lot of community interest about how the construction of Perimeter Road could impact their livelihood. Rapper Kodak Black pled guilty on an assault and battery charge in a Florence County courtroom today, but he won't be facing any new jail time. WBF News reporter Cameron Crow was at that hearing. He's live now to explain what's next for Kodak Black. Cameron. Meredith Kodak Black will only serve 18 months on probation on a reduced charge of assault and battery stemming from an incident following a 2016 Florence concert. Myrtle Beach City leaders ramping up their hiring efforts to help out local businesses. They're now calling on retirees and veterans looking to rejoin the workforce. WMBF news reporter Nia Watson joins us live in Myrtle Beach. Now, and Nia, you think people who retire no longer want to work, but actually that's not the case these days. Yeah, that's right, Eric. I spoke with one man who says he returned to work because of the pandemic. But Eric, city leaders say there are multiple reasons why they're now targeting retirees and veterans to fill these job openings. Live, local, late breaking. WMBF News starts with breaking news. We'd like to thank our community members who did steer clear of the area and did share the message to stay inside all of that and all that coordination with our public safety partners that we were able to take the individual into custody today without any issues. As you just heard from the Horry County Police Department, the suspect connected to that active shooting incident outside of Conway is now in custody. It happened near Fox Hollow Court along Highway 544. Officers and other law enforcement officials are starting to clear that scene out. Yeah, officers say this man, Terry Brady, is under police custody right now. Officials say the case began as a domestic violence incident around 12:13 this afternoon. It happened near Miles Standish Court. They say shots were fired sometime after that. In the latest update from police, they say no Horry County personnel are injured and neither is the suspect. However, the other person involved in the domestic violence incident is hurt. Police have not yet gone into detail. Horry County Fire Rescue says a structure fire was also started in connection to this same incident. That fire is now under control. Today's incident left a number of people on edge. Roberts joins us live right now from the scene with how neighbors saw today's events play out. And Jennifer, I'm guessing one thing's for sure, they're happy the way that it ended with the suspect in custody. You are definitely right about that, Eric. Many of the residents were actually standing in this area where I'm at right now, looking at what you can see right behind me, fire trucks. You can clearly tell this is still a very active investigation, an active scene. Some of the residents told me they were very nervous hearing that the suspect had not yet been apprehended, but right now they're feeling a whole lot better. Live, local, late breaking. This is WNBF News at 4. 
Neighbors are telling us what they saw after being evacuated from their homes during that manhunt yesterday. How one witness describes it, plus more on the suspect. Then a facelift for some PD businesses that have sat empty for years. What city leaders say you may soon see in the newly revitalized buildings. Thanks for tuning in to your only local news here at 4 o'clock. Happy Friday. I'm Meredith Heline. It is a beautiful Friday out there. Let's go ahead and take a live look at Myrtle Beach. We're going to give you all the beauty shots. We have a look over the beach here, intercoastal waterway there at the boathouse, one at the boardwalk there, anything in between. Beautiful, beautiful day. Because as meteorologist Robert Whitehurst tells us now, we are on tap for a little bit, though, of a drop in temperatures come this week. And bring that teensy bit of humidity down that we have. Yeah, just a little bit of a drop for the week. And actually, Good evening to you. Thanks for joining us at 6 o'clock. I'm Eric Weisfeld. We're glad you're with us. Imagine opening your door and seeing your neighbor firing off a gun and some of the bullets hitting your home. That's what one neighbor says happened to her during an active shooting investigation. It sparked a manhunt. This is near Conway. I want to go straight to WMBF news reporter Catherine Phillips. She is live at J. Ruben Long Detention Center where that suspect is booked. Police say it started as a domestic violence incident that quickly escalated. But what kind of charges is this suspect facing? Do we know? Eric, we actually. All right, Catherine, moving on now in just one week. Motorcycle engines will be revving up along the Grand Strand to kick off the spring bike rally. It comes nearly a year after many organizers had to postpone or cancel events due to COVID-19. WMBF News reporter Jennifer Roberts spoke with businesses along the Grand Strand who say they're preparing for a big turnout of bikers in the coming days. Good evening to you, Jennifer. Good evening, Eric. Several businesses like Jam and Leather are making... Chamber CEO Karen Reardon says that she wanted to use the language that you and I as locals, Meredith, use when we say if you want to go to the beach, they wanted people to know that Myrtle Beach is the beach. We are the beach. All right, lots of advertising, a lot of marketing changes here. So, Catherine, are we talking any physical changes that we could actually see around town? You know, there's a few things that are in the works. Nothing is set in stone just yet. There might be new flags coming to light poles with the new redesigned logos. There's also might be some murals or paintings on the sidewalks. But one of the bigger things that we might see is that parking lot on 9th Avenue North. There might be something new coming to that. I'll have those details coming up at 5. More parking. Okay, Catherine Phillips live from Myrtle Beach. Thanks, Catherine. All right, right now, here's a live look inside a news conference being held where authorities are expecting to identify the U.S. Army trainee in custody following the armed hijacking of a school bus. This happened in South Carolina. Plus, the many Myrtle Beach tourists are enjoying the sunshine today, and the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce is trying to bring even more of them here. The plan to boost beach business. Live, local, late breaking. This is WNBF News at 6. Happy Friday Eve. It is 6 o'clock. I'm Eric Hewitt. Thanks for making this your choice for news. I'm Eric Weisfeld. Some cooler weather isn't keeping many of you from enjoying that beach. Still nice out there. And if you're thinking of heading outside, well, Jamie's saying to keep an eye out for some showers. Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold breaking down those chances in a certified most accurate forecast. New for you at 6 o'clock, a South Carolina Highway Patrol trooper is being sued for excessive force, but we also now know he was fired last year after misconduct documents say he allegedly beat up a man, pointed his gun at another man and a child. Our investigative reporter Madison Martin is live for us in the studio. And Madison, last year David Eck was charged with third degree assault and battery, but documents that you obtained show that there's a lot more to this story. Yeah, Eric, they definitely paint a stark picture as well. It is a picture perfect beach day along the Grand Strand. That's from our Ripley's Sky Cam. You can see there just a little bit of wind, but it's not disturbing the volleyball players. Many tourists soaking up the sun, getting out and enjoying their trip as well. And the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce is working on ways to bring more of them here. WMBF News reporter Catherine Phillips is live now along the popular Ocean Boulevard. And Catherine, the chamber's getting a bit of a facelift, so tell us what we can expect to see. They sure are, Eric. Today they are kicking off their summer advertising campaign.